Listen, hey everybody, how you doing today? We're on Multi Hyphenate, the Rebel Filmmaking Communities podcast. And today, Bye-bye. today we have the one, the two. Uh, he's one of two. There's actually two Kyle Austin Brady's in the world, and we got one of them today. The other one was not booked for out. long, though. I'm very close to finding him and ending his life. So if he's listening somehow, yeah. no, I'm coming for you. <laughs> it's just, Stay you know, on you, you hear the one, the only, but it's like, no, there's two actually. No, <laughs> They're identical. <there's> multiple. <laughs> I don't want to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, Kyle Austin Brady or Kyle Brady or Kyle, yeah. as I often refer to him. My yeah, best friend, my brother, my producing partner, my roommate, um, just an all around great gal and yeah. certainly a multi hyphenated nated artist. Mm. So welcome yeah. and thank you. Thank you. I feel very welcome. Good. It's a lovely intro too. Yeah. I've been working on my intros. I practice them all the time and so finally, it. finally I get the recognition mm. they I can deserve. See, I can see the reps. <laughs> i wish there was like an instant replay of me just stumbling <laughs> through every interview yeah. that's like a that's bit in of itself yeah. like you know that's a bit like to make the audience have to watch every uh intro i've ever done would probably be like <laughs> seven minutes you know and just oh yeah but just to see if they'd sit through it it's you know, good though you know you, you, you slather it on it makes people feel good you know Oh, good. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. So I want to start in the beginning with your name. I've noticed a lot of guests have um, name, like stories around their name when it comes to Hollywood. Did you ever consider a name change or adding your middle name in there? Like, did that ever occur to you when you came down here? Um, I had a couple times where, you know, I thought about Kyle Austin and it, it sounds very like, you know, soap opera So it's kind of nice, you know, but um, I actually, my legal name has always been Kyle Austin Brady. But when I was a child, I went by Kyle Dankbar because my, I've never met my biological father, but my father who raised me and who's the father of my brother biologically, his name was Randy Dankbar. Um, so if you ever see him, say what up, he's a good dude. <laughs> um, so I had that name for a while, but then when I came to LA just for my own personal reasons and how I felt about it, I just wanted to stick with Kyle Brady and rock that. And, you know, I've, if I ever went Kyle Austin Brady, that might work, but Kyle Brady's just been working. So I figure why not? No, I love it. Uh, it's a great name. I was just curious, you know, I've had it like someone, they had to compete for their name in SAG because someone else yeah. had it. So they had to like do that deliberation and figure that out with that other person and say, or someone's name was too hard to pronounce or they had too many names and had to whittle it down. So it was just, everybody's got a little like, you know, Devin, even he was like, people didn't know how to say my name. So Mm -hmm. I thought about using other names and I'm like, Crytendon, Crytendon, divine Crytendon. (laughs) Man. <laughs> he is divine Crytendon. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like sounds like a Greek like yeah, biological yeah, yeah. word or something. Yeah, like a foot yeah, part yeah. of the foot. Mm, yeah. The divine <laughs> Crytendon. Mm. <laughs> so, Once that fails, you're, you're doomed. <laughs> That's the next Indiana Jones movie. The <laughs> divine <laughs> Crytendon. <laughs> uh. yeah. Yeah. At that point, th- that'll be just an AI version of him because he's like one trip away from just crumbling into yeah, pieces. He's as pretty, much as I love yeah. me some H Ford, like <laughs> enough, you know, eventually enough is enough, right? Like just be an old man. <laughs> it's cool, dude. Have grace. Yeah, it's fine. yeah. Be like transition to Sean Connery's yeah. part. Yeah, um, yeah, from the old one, you know. Become but, the mentor, anyways. Any Whoville. But no one wants to see the daughter or the son take over the yeah. franchise. So it is kind of complicated. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. No one's going to go see John Wick without Keanu. I'm yeah. sorry. They're just yeah. not. I wouldn't. No. <laughs> you know, yeah. unless they get someone as interested. Like, if they got Nick Cage, you know, something like that. Where you're yeah. like, ooh, that. Really be like a, <laughs> like a swing. Yeah. 
Because well, you're, gone... you're getting the cream of the crop with Keanu. You're like, I yeah. don't want to see. I, I don't want to see anybody else in that role. Like, I it's don't want to. Very true. Like <laughs> I'm not neutral. I'm negative. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like pretty soon. It's like everyone just starts going into like meta land. Like that's where Nick Cage went, and I I loved it. It's like just become very self aware, mm. and then just milk that shit, dude. Come yeah. on. No, I know. A part of me, you know. Like a few years ago, I thought it'd be super fun to take like um, movies essentially that have been made, mm. especially popular ones, and be able to do different like alt edits. Because you'll hear me sometimes when we're watching movies, and I'm like, "What if this happened right now?" Just to oh, be yeah. funny, you know. But like, Absolutely. we're getting to the place where we might actually be able to do that, and that I oh, think yeah. that's interesting is like retelling old movies if we're able to do it technologically sound. That'd be kind of interesting at one point to like reshape an old movie, like Thelma and oh, Louise. They we'll didn't drop off the it. cliff. They did this or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just leapt out of the car and were like, <laughs> "No, we live." Um, I mean, they're going to be able to do that though. That's like the yeah. whole AI thing. Yeah. Like that's what I saw. Saw is that they were talking about like you know you start scanning someone's face and all of a sudden you can be like you know I want Bruce Willis and you know shania twain in a <laughs> bank heist movie in yeah, mars or something yeah. and it'll be like okay and then they'll throw it together and it's like she doesn't even act but she'll be in it because i yeah. wanted it what's the so, shania twain song uh you don't I mean, impress me much <laughs> yeah, that don't impress me much <laughs> that's the yeah, bank I mean, right bruce comes out catalog. bruce comes out with the bank <laughs> with a bag of cash that don't impress me much. <laughs> They're yeah. in jail, like you know. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be a great AI pairing. Okay, okay, yeah. Brady, we're getting All way right. off track here. All right, let me get I to know. my. It never my... happens. <laughs> so, uh, so, where are you from, and what is your relationship to that city now versus maybe what it was when you were growing up? Um, well, I'm from Sacramento, California, and just the general area, because um, I moved around a decent amount as a kid, not like outside of that region, but just different parts. So, you know, I've, if you're from there, you wouldn't, you would know this stuff, but you wouldn't if you obviously weren't. But like Citrus Heights, Carmichael, Auburn, Roseville, you know, Sacramento, like a little deeper. I'm just that whole area. So, right on. That's around, What's What's your relationship to the, like, do you love it? Do you like going back? Do you kind of, you know what I mean? Cause like yeah. I had a relationship to San Diego that's different at 17 than it is now at 36. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, I probably would have been like, Ugh, like, I don't, I want to go back. It's, you know, boring mm -hmm. and stuff, but it is nice to go back now and get a little bit of, a different experience you know there's kind of a especially in roseville where I, that's the main area where i grew up in the sacramento area um there is a different kind of person and kind of quality to the people out there um and it feels kind of like a big small town sacramento mm. to me a lot of the time at least the areas i'm from um so it's nice to go there but you know i'd say usually after about a week or so i'm ready to get back home back to yeah, la i feel that no. I feel that. And how did you find art? Like, how did it come into your life? Dude, I didn't find art. Art found me, man. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> sure. But, you know, like, all bullshitting around. Like, it, truthfully, that's how I look at it now. Um, you know, I've been doing voices ever since I could talk and imitating people. I've, you know, most of my childhood was spent watching cartoons and movies and focusing really on that and just loving it. I liked to, um, you know, it was the escape of things was nice and the imagination getting to play. And I mean, I played with like action figures and micro machines until I was like 15, 16, you know, in mm -hmm. my room making stories up and doing both voices for like the villain and the hero. And everything was always very revenge based for some reason, you know, I, right wrongs being righted you know i was mm -hmm. all about that but yeah, uh, absolutely. and music yeah. too right in your house mm -hmm. yeah i got my first guitar when i was 11 and i have a very i have a very like artistic family in general like my mom was always singing around me my cousins are all 
very artistic and talented in their own right. My brother was a chef for a while and was really good with food, still is. Um, so I've just been in, from a very artistic family, but music was a big side of it and just been playing guitar and making noises and all kinds of stuff for as long as I can remember. So just seemed right to go where people try to pay you for it or encourage that behavior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the, not the local supermarket, but no. Los Angeles. But I'll do it <laughs> if I have to. And, uh, your mother was very musical and your cousins, right? Like, so mm-hmm. there's a lot of that in- involvement as well. Yeah, my cousins are all very musical. They can sing. My cousin Sam Spainhauer, uh, who's also part of the band Ugly Side Up, check him out. Pretty fun, talented band, good group of dudes. He's one of the smartest music people maybe I've ever met. And my cousin Josh is similarly smart, very, very talented, and just has an energy level that even supersedes mine most of the time which if you've known me for a while is pretty impressive to say yeah and my mom just sang for as long as i can remember growing up with her a lot of 90s country and 80s pop in the car Mm. so Mm. but yeah that's pretty cool we my mom did not sing Mm. um there was no singing allowed There will be no singing in the car. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, but we like she would blast like Metallica, like you could hear it, Metallica, oh. right? Yeah. You could hear it like a block away, and mm. uh, or Depeche Mode, Oingo Boingo, Hell and yeah. then my dad introduced me to more uh, country, but you know I was in that <clears throat> rebellious like. I don't want to fuck your music, you know, like yeah, no matter totally. what it was. Um, but I do love country music now. Well, country music had kind of a bad rap too when we were younger. I, if I remember, mm-hmm. a lot of kids were like, you like country? And yeah. Like, dude, right. everyone likes country. And yeah. it's like, who cares? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's good songs out there. Yeah. There's no such thing as guilty pleasure. It's just pleasure. <laughs> Especially now it's like, dude, yeah. get over yourself. Like, like what you like. The thing now is like, if you're going to like it, like like it you know Mm -hmm. like own the shit out of it be like yeah i love it like i was like this with nickelback all right Mm. i'm saying it i'm saying it on the podcast now for the world (laughs) to hear i loved nickelback growing up (laughs) and for a while i'd be like i'm gonna keep that like you know people Mm -hmm. would talk shit and i'd be like i'm gonna keep that down not telling you and i've been listening to some of their old stuff and new and i'm like some of the shit rips is this how you remind me nickelback Mm mm-hmm Dude, yeah. it's amazing. What yeah. people I never got the hate. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and people, this is the thing. Everyone's full of shit because they were one of the top selling bands of like the 2000s. So for all the people that were saying they didn't like them, they were secretly purchasing those dollar songs and albums on iTunes. Uh, I know. What do people get out of being so hateful? Like, just don't listen to it. Yeah. And maybe it's because they finally get a bit of a spotlight and they feel like... Mm-hmm. And and then because it's their first spotlight, they feel like whatever they talked about, that's what they yeah. got to keep going to have a spotlight again or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it's such totally. a fucking waste of your energy. And I've been guilty of it to hate on something. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's natural. I think a little criticism is nice. I think it's fine. Agreed. You have to have- I'm talking about hate, world, like when you're like, like when people, spending yeah. time going in or publicly speaking about it, you yeah. know, different 100%. to criticize or dislike, fine, but to hate, yeah, intense. Like I feel like that's the thing, you know, you go, you're going out of your way, you're expending energy now to try to like change the course of something, or like it's almost, you know, when you get in a debate and someone won't let it go, like you have to, they're waiting for you to be like, okay, you're right, and it's just like, <laughs> no, like I don't like the song. You yeah. can like the song. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, and I've yeah. done that too to people. Where I'm yeah. like, oh, oh. Yeah. it's just like because you take it as this personal challenge to you, or it's like you don't like the thing, but yeah. I like that, yeah. and it's just like, dude, no, it's yeah, okay. You probably have some attachment to fondness of childhood or whatever it is, and yeah. we don't even realize it, but mm-hmm. we're feeling like that memory has been attacked. Yeah, which is like some of our most vulnerable places. Pretty interesting. Hundred percent, man. All right, so now we know where you're from. Finally, right? Ooh, finally. 
The mystery is solved. Oh, so let me list like so Kyle's an actor. He's a producer. We can even subcategorize voice actor, character, you know, cartoon mm. actor, musician, you know, you play guitar, you produce, you mix all to certain degrees, right? Mm-hmm. And so you do all these different things. And I, I just want to put that out there for the people who don't know you out there to clarify because a little bit of this feels inside baseball. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. But uh, and that's okay. And I don't so know I just, why either. No, we I barely fucking... see each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kyle's in the other room because we're in, we share an office, but we realized well we haven't made the time to figure out how to do it in the same room yeah. yet so let's just i just didn't almost... want to be in there you know it's like <laughs> any opportunity to be like space yeah <laughs> give me so, space <laughs> yeah. so kyle and i met at playhouse west here in north hollywood uh maybe like 2009 which is kind of wild yes. to think about yes. and i remember i love to tell this story but like I was in the background as I was, like very murkily existing, just like yeah. in the shadows. Like a real, a real fucking artist. <laughs> yeah, you know, just yeah. Like... Didn't want to be fucking bothered with laughter <laughs> and joy. And yeah. I look at you know, Kyle's like literally three rows in front of me, same scene. And he's just like, I could just see the back of his head, like. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. and he's like holding court yeah. and we got there the same day right yeah. like it wasn't like you had all this time on me and knew everybody that's mm-hmm. just what you what uh, who you are bit. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i like and people. so what can I say? 14 years later we would have never guessed we we're here now but we've had quite uh an experience but let's let's start at the beginning you know your experience at playhouse as an actor not even just in terms of me, but like, you know, thinking about people behind you, the generation behind you, how is that experience for you? What were the positives? Maybe what were some things you would take away for the next time? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I. And how'd you come to Playhouse even? Got it. Yeah. Um, I got there. I'm trying to, man, it's been a while now. So I'm trying to remember. I feel like, some i think maybe i went to some kind of like actor workshop place like some place where they'd suggest like headshot people and mm-hmm. try to help you out and i think it maybe was a school there or i through a casting director workshop somehow through word of mouth i heard about it it might have even been from maybe a friend or something um and i heard about it kind of looked it up seemed interesting enough and then I went to do the audit and <laughs> I always remember this, like you go to this audit and, <laughs> you know, people come in and some guys like cutting a piece of paper into strips and this girl's like banging on his door and she comes in and they just start fighting like immediately over something mm-hmm. and they're having all this passionate dialogue. And she like, I think she slapped him in the face or something. And he's like, the paper strips are falling and all that stuff. And this exercise is over this door and activity which if you're an actor, a Meisner trained actor, you know what that is. <laughs> and they get done. And uh, the teacher, Mr. Carnegie at the time was like, all right, now why was this good? And I was in the back like, holy shit, I have no clue. I have no clue, but I know some wild stuff went down. It was $200 a month and it seemed like mm-hmm. a cool place to grow um, mm-hmm. and try some stuff out. And luckily I met a lot of dope people, one of them, including you, uh, Ended up doing Welcome Home Soldier, which helped oh, wow. me my girlfriend at the time, which yeah. was an awesome experience. Um, I had a lot of good times, a lot of good rehearsals, met a lot of good friends, worked on a lot of good projects, started the improv group with you guys and did a mm-hmm. bunch of sketches. And it led to a lot of growth and discovery uh, in my life. And I think... I wouldn't say there's negatives, but if there was something that I could go back and do maybe different or what I would keep in mind more is, and this is what I'm working on now always, but I was just very outside in. It was very Mm. much like looking outside of myself for the validation, you know, for um, the self-worth of the work. And that made it hard for me to connect personally with work because that's not where I was looking. 
I was going, okay, what's going to be good? Who, what's going to impress this person? What's going to make me safe and not get criticized or something? And then a lot of times it could be crippling or like give me anxiety attacks, truthfully, which I'm sure some people can relate to in an artistic uh, way. Um, but I think that would be the thing I would tell myself is like, do it for you, truly do it for you. And the lumps and the ups and downs and all of that is part of it. It's part, that's part of the learning. And I think now at 36, I'm starting to actually understand that on a deeper level and seek it out. I think if mm -hmm. I were to go back now, I would be hungrier for coaching and be more willing to make mistakes and fail and try bigger things and give myself a little more grace. Mm. Well said. Well said. Yeah, we did a lot together in those days. I mean, we still do a lot now, but it's just so different to think about like those playhouse shows like Welcome Home Soldier on at Studio yeah. One or like the short form improv shows at Studio mm -hmm. Two and Three. Yeah. Like, you know, just like the true black box theater experience. There's literally like yeah. the stage furniture crammed in the back you're like there's no green <laughs> room you're just like yeah different it's different time different time remember when we played a show just to sarah like, <laughs> oh yeah yeah we God, literally one person like in the audience couple. yeah there was a couple we did where it was like god bless her what a great yeah that like, was the first was one supporter. I was in where we just had one audience member. So that was like, I've had two or three yeah. several times, uh -huh. but one was outstanding. Cause it's like, we, I think we literally were like, do we still go like <laughs> out? Like, yeah. Yep, I mean, I and we did. Thank God. I, did. I was definitely on the fence. So I was on the side of let's cancel, you know? Yeah. And I think Gabe was probably like not in Harris. Like, those yeah. motherfucking moral they stewards of goodness. <laughs> they kept us on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure Sarah was she great about it. The course. Yeah, she was. She was such a good supporter. She came to so many of those shows. Yeah. Truthfully. And, Thank you, you know. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. God bless and, you. And uh, so speaking, Sarah's included in this, but uh, Richard Peter Johnson. Yeah. So that was our my first feature. And you were one of the leads in it you played my younger brother mm -hmm. and you are absolutely sh uh, show stealing good in it and that was so much fun to do with you and mm -hmm. sarah was also you know was our whole sketch team yeah um but that isn't that crazy to think that was like 2012 yeah 11 I mean, years ago it is crazy and what a project though yeah, we made I mean, it for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and we all just got together and made it happen. Called in favors and like, really, when you think about it, like some crazy stuff actually in the mm -hmm. movie. Like some of the people that decided to be in it, mm -hmm. even for like a little bit. Some of the favors. I mean, I think like a huge part of our crafty. I remember was like Little Caesars, mm -hmm. like hot and ready's. Man, those five dollar hot and ready's, dude. Yeah. You can't don't discount the Little Caesars. <sighs> I mean, we shot it in 14 days. Yeah. That's crazy. Now that we know what we're doing a little bit yeah. or have more experience, yeah. I'd say rather, we're like, oh my God. Yeah. That's what, that's what, in my opinion, makes it cool because it's so very, looking back, you can clearly see that it was just a bunch of people going, mm. yes, I will you know, do this for this amount of time because I want to be there and make this project happen for better, for worse, whatever happens. And people did, man. People really yeah. showed up for that project, like the locations that we ended up using, taking time off of work, helping out with, you know, calling in favors. It was really cool. Yeah, I remember like Devin's girlfriend at the time, Jessica, like even that's how we got like the photo studio. I believe it was her uncle, so shout out her, you know, people yeah. like Jacqueline and Andrea showing up and yeah. Jim Neve and Wolfgang yeah. and like <laughs> nobody's getting paid. Yeah. You know, and Devin wrote that by himself. I mean, we came, you know, we all developed it, but he like the actual writing of it, he just like locked himself away for a week and did yeah. it. And, I'm like, and it was oh. a blast, dude. I mean, yeah. like that's, that's the goal. I mean, you know, we've been fortunate or at least I have with, 
a lot of the stuff that I've done to do it with people that I enjoy and most of the time my friends. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's been a sketch or, you know, like in the past few years, we've had a couple features and some other fun projects that we've gotten to do. And it's just awesome to be able to look to your left or right and be like, oh, this is someone that is like my friend, like someone yeah. I truly enjoy being around and can trust. And I think it's one of the most, the things that makes it most worth it, you know. I agree. I agree. And we did the uh, RPJ TV pilot a few mm -hmm. years later and you reprised your role, but it was probably like a little, it was like a little different, right? Like we rehashed it in a, a different right? angle. What, what stood out to you about that experience of doing the same role, but not twice necessarily, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. It was different for me. That's for sure. I think it, for me, the biggest difference was having already done it once mm -hmm. to come in and have not so much a fresh take, but more, a more understood take. Mm. So it's like, okay, I've seen the movie. I've seen my performance. I've done the performance. I've had these kinds of things set in, you know, that I've sat with for a while and then I get to bring it all back up again. It just felt more controlled mm. and a little more in that sense, more free of like, oh, I understand this guy more. So I can just kind of go out there and just be him. Easier. Yeah. You know, it's a trip about that project. The TV is I've never released it publicly. Yeah. You never know. It yeah, might, no. I might, might as well be. just have it out there yeah. at this point. I mean, shop I have around, used it. Around. I have used it to shop around, but because yeah. that's why we shot it. It was a sales yeah. apparatus, but I was just watching something the other day and I was like, I could live out in the world and who knows? Fuck it. It's not doing any good. Just sitting there. Yeah. You know, and you know, you never know, <clears throat> man. especially nowadays, like there's all kinds of stuff going on. You never know what someone sees and goes, you know what? Today that shit just got me. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, I mean, there's so many stories of that being the case. So no, yeah, no, I agree. Um, so our next project was the stocking fields um where you also play my younger brother just kidding um, uh. <laughs> so that was mm, stocking fields is like five years later from rpj mm -hmm. yeah That's i mean that wild. one was awesome for me it is wild i mean that was another one where people just came together and got it done you and mr jordan wisely getting mm -hmm. the script done yeah. i mean you did all kinds of shit on that thing i mean that's truly impressive from uh, my standpoint, you know, to oh, watch someone you. go through and do all that, do the writing, producing, getting all kinds of stuff. I mean, you did everything on that. Thanks, brother. I'm, and I had lots of amazing help along the way. Certainly wasn't alone, but it was like, it's weird because I was like at every touch point of it, but you know, not certainly not alone, but I was there for every piece of it. So yeah. it feels monumental in a way in terms of like man hours and focus it was a lot and Dude, super proud it of it yeah absolutely i'll always be proud of i mean both the movies that we've that we were talking about mm. i mean that's the one that you know for me you know sometimes i think it's easy we've talked about this before i think it's easy to be out here for however long and you know, kind of get maybe jaded or disappointed with where you're at and want bigger and better. And, you know, stocking fields for me is always a reminder that there's some people that come out here and they quit or they never get like a real like experience, like on a pro like that. It never happens. It does. There are people out there. And that mm -hmm. film was an opportunity again, to act with my friends and people I trust, you know, get, traveled out to places get like room and all you know like the whole experience like take time off get paid like the movie got done and mm -hmm. it was sick got to work in a sound stage and so for me i'll always hold on to that experience of going like oh for at least at least once like i really got to do it i got to do the thing that we came out here to do mm -hmm. yeah you were you had an immense amount of gratitude then. And I remember being, cause we stayed together 
And that was one of the cooler aspects of the project, in my opinion, was the housing situation. Yeah. Um, not Gabe for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, Gabe I mean, you, and we got to like you, chat it up and get close with people. And yeah, and you like, and I were sleeping on the floor of the couch, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I was on a futon that was yeah. that was just under the length of my body. <laughs> which if you've ever slept on a futon or any kind of uh, couch when it's just under it does this nice u shape with your neck and, and it's exactly how you want it to be i don't know if you know this but when you sleep you never want a nice straight neck no, you want no. it, you want it fully fully and cocked you, forward and, and you want and a, a, nar a narrow space yeah. Yeah, yeah you want it very taut in the back just yeah twitching um <laughs> but it was awesome it was awesome truly to have it happen and it felt like almost like going to like camp or something mm, just having a bunch did. of people it was tara yeah. and nora mm -hmm. and tori yeah. oh my gosh just ryan marsico just yeah. so many good people and the and coffee i remember in. being so good yep. oh, yeah yeah coffee was good but we got snowed in and that mm -hmm. was even great it was like okay like not the ideal for the production, but it was like, okay, so I'm in an Airbnb in Northern California in the mountains while it's snowing and just looking amazing. Not yeah. too shabby. Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah. Oh, gosh, what an experience that was. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Stocking Fields, you also scored it. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? It was awesome. And who'd actually. you score it with? I scored it with the uh, great Jesse Shapiro and Rob Shore of the Element OP, which I am also a part of. Um, and that was that was another thing where that one just it felt like being a kid again almost because they have, you know, had because Jesse has since moved and so has Rob. They've moved on there with their ladies, you know, growing up. It happens mm -hmm. to all of us. Um, mm -hmm. But the studio, it was just a playground that they had. And um, I think COVID actually hit around the time that we started working on that because, you know, it takes a while sometimes to get things together and figure out what we're going to do with the the project. And so I ended up staying at their place, I think for just like the whole month mm. of January that we wow. worked on it. See, sorry, my dog is underneath me. I know it looks like <laughs> I'm just fiddling around. Um, <laughs> uh, but that was, you know, I slept on a, <laughs> I slept on their leather couch at times or the floor at times at their place. And we just spent a month just working and being creative and scoring for me was like, I think it's the ultimate kind of musical expression because you're just looking at this project and there's no music, there's nothing. You're just watching scenes going, how does this make me feel? Or what do I want to feel here? Mm. And then you open up these tools, which we had like, since we you know we worked with pro tools and we had all kinds of instruments to play with and pedals and just you know effects and we were looping things back on each other and just really we could play with you know nowadays you can do anything you want really it's it's mm. actually insane the level that you can go to with music and just art in general and that's what it was we just got to play and put something together and whenever i watch the movie i'm always that's another part of it that i'm just really psyched about it's you know and so i i've told you this before but thank you for that experience but i feel like you know the same way i had my hands on a lot of different parts of it and mm -hmm. it just felt cool right on you're most welcome and i'm so pleased with how everything turned out that's mm -hmm. badass yeah, and, man. Uh, we made an action movie which is one of my favorite <laughs> genres you know as as you know very well yeah, I'll go A B C level action movie. I don't care. I'll get and I'll give you my full attention. <sighs> I'll ride it out to the end, people. I don't care. He truly does not care. I'm the type to care. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll walk right out. I'll walk straight out of a movie. I've walked out of a movie I've paid for ten minutes <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh, no, you're good about it you're good about it uh, i'm always like i'm that guy that's always holding out hope i'm like maybe maybe there will be something at the end that I'll, I'll there, go, that was worth it there's certainly always something to learn yeah. but sometimes i'm not 
there to learn. Sometimes I'm there to truly be, you know, entertained. And uh, I also think maybe there's just too much content in a sense where, I don't know, it's almost like an inner uh, jadedness because there's literally so much. It's true. I mean, it, it is, there is a lot of stuff out there and a lot of content and it can get a little, I mean, COVID crazy. That was like, mm. I remember just watching so much stuff. Mm. Like it got to a point mm-hmm. where it was like, damn, I'm watching like movies I've seen, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of times throughout my life, like Star Wars or something. I'm like, I'm watching it again. Why not? Like, yeah, let's God, see. strange time that was. It was, but there's a lot of stuff out there. And I think, you know, that's part of probably the flux of things. I think that's probably why, you know, these strikes are happening too, is that mm. there's just so much out there that the value of it, I think, has dipped a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, especially even with social media. And, you know, I don't, I don't like to say because I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I think it's just a new thing that you have to yeah. deal with. And there's people that, you know, you can go on TikTok and find your entertainment if you want. Mm. I think that's awesome. But it's, you know, I think we come from the same school of thought that, you know, there's a lot of content out there. So the challenge to be good or to make something of quality is even more present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. There's options. There's multitudes of options. So better be good or entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it just makes sense, you know, so much supply that the demand goes down and that the, the we talk about this all the time, but like the streaming model doesn't incentivize great work. It just incentivizes minutes spent. Yeah. And so even if that really all they want is your, like, does anybody ever think about that? Like, how does Netflix make more money if they have a hit versus not having a hit? Yeah, I, I don't know. I have no clue, and uh, I don't know if we're, I don't know if they want us to know. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do, they wouldn't release their numbers for a long time, and, and I mean that's always a weird thing to me. But whatever, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole necessarily. We. so this is perfect because you went right into it but voices and accents so if somebody was wanting to get into learning that to do that for themselves like what could you tell them about accents and voices that you've learned over your, your lifetime as far as like performing them or yeah like- yeah how do you hear them like you know teach me essentially like if you were you know because you talk about sometimes like you're like oh i realize like their voice is up here and the vo- the mouth articulation and the those things i think people would be interested in knowing yeah i think if i really actually pared it down to the simplest thing is mm-hmm. a lot of times i just talk a lot and i make mm-hmm. a lot of noises And Mm -hmm. there's, I spent a lot of my childhood and adult life, even now, like if you weren't here right now, I'd be walking around the house talking to myself and, you know, beatboxing or making weird noises. And a lot of times when I would do that, I might make a noise and all of a sudden it would like click in my mind. I'm like, oh, that sounds like Mm so-and-so or that sounds like this kind of noise or something like that. And then I'll kind of work with it. And then you start trying to talk like it or, um, that's usually what would happen is I'd just be Mm. goofing off or goofing around and then something would click and I'd go, Oh, okay. And then I'd remember that feeling of what that was like. And then you kind of start, it's like working a muscle. You kind of start realizing Mm. certain people live in this area, certain people live in this area and then mouth shapes and lip shape and where Mm. things resonate and stuff. You know, I think a big example of someone that is, um, what is he? Oh, uh, Frank Caliendo, like on TikTok, he has this thing where he does John C. Riley and he does Mark Ruffalo, and they're mo- almost similar because they have that kind of like you know that, 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 that <laughs> kind of thing. But mm-hmm. like John C. Riley, it's like there's just a little different intonation. Then he talks about like yeah, you just do that, and so you kind of mm-hmm. learn these little feelings. And singing's the same way. Like you learn pitch, 
and you kind of learn where that pitch feels and where to place mm. it. And it's very similar. And then you Interesting. just kind of remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, is, it is like working on I mean, if you do that your whole life, it'd be like riding a bike, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just watch a bunch of movies and stuff or listen to people. And now, like, if I listen to someone talk, or they start if they have a different voice or die, like I'll start even in movies, like when I'm watching movies, I'll feel like my throat start to like lift or shift or I'll start naturally like shaping my mouth just to what they're doing out of just reflex. Well, I love that. I, I love like discovering new ways in, you know, mm. I was just listening to the guy who plays Tom Wansgans on Succession. Yeah. And he was talking about how his voice, like the difference in his, like he thinks about it, the -hmm. difference in his voice when he sees other actors. He's like, when I see Greg, I'm just like, oh, there's Greg. And he's like, you know, (laughs) and he's like, when I see my wife, I'm like, oh, shit, it's high because I'm scared of her. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting, and I know that's not all of his work and maybe Mm -hmm. I'm even taking it out of context of it, but. I I really liked what he was talking about yeah. because I it think it's true. Makes sense. Even even to have that insight, to have that in you or with you while you're working, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing to have yeah. because it's true. We do all react very differently. I mean, you and me do this all the time. Like if we like react or say something, we'll be like, yeah, and we'll just look at each other. Oh, yeah. and you're like, yeah. yeah. It's like you have these ways that you react or do things because communication is different lucky okay let's show you real quick just so people. Mm-hmm. this is my dog lucky <laughs> hey buddy uh, and he keeps uh, licking my hands trying to get his shot but daddy's working all right go over there. <laughs> so anywho but yeah voice is voice is a big uh indicator of communication beyond just what we're saying literally um, mm-hmm. i think I, I heard something it was that chris voss guy on interrogation or communication whatever and he said like the way humans connect, what you're literally saying is actually the smallest thing that gets taken into consideration via when you communicate with someone. It's usually body mm. language is the biggest and then intonation of what you're saying, which is mm. kind of like the subtext, really, <laughs> if you think about it. Like That's if someone's so like, hi, you're like, okay, you're irritated or hi, yeah. you're like, oh my yeah. God. And yeah. then what you're actually saying is like third, fourth on the list. Huh. Which I find interesting. I believe it, honestly. Yeah. Because sometimes I'll say something to Lish, and she'll be like, what? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, my words were not <laughs> matching upon my behavior. Mm, yes, it does happen <laughs> on occasion. The what? lilt. The lilt of the voice does not match the scribbled words. <laughs> That's scribbled. True. I made That's... that word up. No, dude, that's old English. No. Yeah, totally. Totes. Uh, <laughs> so our next project that we, we made together is Helmet. Helmet. And Which, you wait, always... whoa. Oh, what is, whoa. What is whoa. that? I know to, to people, at least to me right now, it looks like it says Temle, but it's Helmet. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it says, it says Helmet on the side, <laughs> not Temle. Temle. Um, it's, it's that's a, like my kid's first name, Temle. Yeah. Timley. Uh, Timley. Timley. Oh, Somebody Timley. fetch Timley. He'd go by Tim. Tems. <laughs> Tim. What's up, Tems? Tim Tim. He'd Tim, never Tim. get over that. We named him Timley. <laughs> and we would he asked why, Papa, right? On my deathbed. <laughs> I'd go, because of the podcast. You didn't yeah. listen? And then you I'd did. die. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Making Man, him feel I'm... guilt. And he'd never be able to find it. It'd be like a lost episode. So yeah, he'd always yeah, forever live yeah, not yeah. knowing. Because knowing our luck with yours, it'll just, we'll have to redo yeah, it again. Because this isn't the first time we've yeah. recorded Kyle. Just I, all the haters out there going like, why did it take so long? It's like, because, you know, we I, already did it. I have to it. jump in here. <laughs> it was me. And I have to, I was, the outfit I chose was horrible. My hair looked terrible. And the <laughs> angle that the camera was shooting up at me from, I had a, I just looked like I had a squatty double chin and I wasn't, I wasn't attracted to myself and I didn't like it. So I decided, nay, I will shoot a second 
and show that to the world. And that's the last time I ever showed anybody their tape before I released mm. it. <laughs> Pure vanity, essentially. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't blame you. It was early days. We were still figuring it all out. It was for the better because remember the camera at the time was like. Exactly. Oh I was God. a guinea pig, people. I was the lab rat. Uh, people should know that that camera was as infuriating as it is maybe to watch. Yeah. To, to try to fix it without having mm -hmm. the software be able to install on your computer whatever it's fine i'm over it it's, I, um, it's fine riverside's a great app everybody loves riverside it's great riverside's great they Everyone. never have done anything wrong uh, right. <laughs> strike me down riverside all, the, all of a sudden it's all <laughs> no they've been good they've been good all right so um also you know before we even get to helmet oops, almost dropped my pen uh -oh. um there's palpatine yes. there's called to duty which yeah. are two sketches we filmed mm -hmm. maybe like in the year prior yeah those are, those are pandemic shoots if i recall definitely definitely i mean you gotta do something right yeah those were a lot of fun yeah um yeah what are your thoughts on those sketches I mean, I loved it. Which you again. could say short film too, even truly, you know, for yeah. people out there. Uh, for me, I mean, again, it was just an opportunity to play, and Call of Duty was fun because we got to work with Mr. Brian Lally, who brought such a heater of a monologue to open that thing with. I remember looking at you, being like, "This is like really good. <laughs> is mm -hmm. this too good for a comedy sketch, mm -hmm. where I'm about to just blow <laughs> this whole situation up?" Mm -hmm. um and it wasn't it was amazing he killed it it um, had to be that it yeah. had to be that it had to be so for all you out there it has to be real it has to be real it's part of it so uh, otherwise but, kyle wouldn't have been as funny it's true it has to jut up against something yeah yeah you can't have it's too good much wacky yeah you gotta have you gotta have the sweet and the salt you know mm -hmm. the spice and the nice um, okay we get it we get yeah, it you know no, you know the we good the bad and Oh, and you geez. have oh, no. the facts of sketch comedy. Um, <laughs> so loved doing that one. And Palpatine for me, Palpatine, at the core of who I am as an actor, and I think a person, Palpatine is what I enjoy doing the most. It mm. was, you know, a different voice, a different character. I had made can you, on. Can you, can you give a brief, <laughs> like, description or synopsis of the the project because it's pretty yeah. funny especially if you're a star wars fan yeah so my this was my opinion on the new three films uh there's the daisy the ridley john B boyega films yeah. right yeah the force awakens the last jedi and what is the third one i forget can't think of it now but <laughs> i remember watching the force awakens and the last jedi and or the second one, I, I really don't know if I'm doing the names right. It doesn't matter. But the first two, and I was like, okay, I'm, 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 I'm living with it. And then the trailer for the third one came out. And as I'm watching it, I keep kind of getting this feeling. And I'm just like, no, like, no, right? No. And then right at the end, you just hear this like, eh. Eh, eh, eh. and I was like, no, they brought him back. They're bringing him back. They're bringing back Emperor Palpatine, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And so I wrote this sketch where it's basically the people in the writers' room for Star Wars going like, "We got it, guys. We got the next trilogy." You know, before like we got the Daisy Ridley one that was coming up, and they're like, "We can write whatever we want. All the plot lines, it's loosey goosey. We don't have to worry about Luke Skywalker. None of that. We can do whatever we want." And they start doing it and halfway in between i show up as emperor palpatine and i'm like well what if the villain is me <laughs> and everyone's like absolutely not no 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 and i just start basically picking people off one by one <laughs> for disagreeing with me being the key plot villain of this new trilogy again you're gonna, you're gonna be the villain again again yeah, again <laughs> again again like all nine movies this uh. guy is just behind the scenes and it's like he got thrown in he goes down <laughs> Like it clones, man. And that's too, that's clones for a second time. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was nothing else that we could have done. Just saying. There goes I love it, it, by the way. I love yeah. it though. 
He oh, did. Dude. He knows it. <laughs> I think I'll it's never... too masterful writing. Actually, <laughs> I just think the delivery wasn't as yeah. strong. It's it's just like I don't know. For me, I'm just like give me something new. But I understand they couldn't give you something new at the end. They... It, look Absolutely at it as nine it. movies. Look at it as a, a nine movie thing. Yeah, and you can appreciate that no. he's the villain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the appreciation is very. That's the word I would use. Appreciate. <laughs> okay. But you so, know, they uh, did what they did. They made the movie. Yeah. And I got to do a sketch out of it where I got to play a very fun character. And you committed. Like, you're, yeah. you you bought lenses that were expensive, contact lenses. Oh, yeah. Makeup. That was awesome, actually. An amazing process. Because I was going to go on Amazon.com and just, like, rip some lenses. I figured, like, Not Amazon.org? No, Amazon.com said it, <laughs> said it. Um, and that's not like they make the lenses. They just, you know, ship them to you. Yeah. Um, but they had options on there and some other websites. And I went and asked someone about it. Oh, I went to, what is that makeup? Friends? Friends? Nigel's on, or Friends? Friends. It was Friends, friends on, yeah. on, on Laurel Canyon Boulevard, mm -hmm. I believe. I went to them and to get some makeup for my face for palpatine and i asked them about contact lenses and they sent me to a place on ventura i can't remember but they said don't ever do that so word to the wise if you're gonna ever get lenses for anything don't just like buy them because your eyeball has a specific shape and so does like you know every, this whole thing has this so they literally laser measured my eyes so like scanned them did all this stuff did a vision vision test everything you can't see now but he got yeah. his lenses in. <laughs> it was worth it. Every bit of what? Yeah. Um, but, so I went in and they did it. And then I tried on multiple ones and then walked away with the lenses. And it was amazing. They were wonderful. I'll have to figure out what the name uh, was of the place. But they had like literally on the wall, they had the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. So these guys do like big, big films and big projects with for lenses. So that was awesome. I did like my teeth and stained mm. all that. And it was great. It's it's the the I would love to do that on it again. Oh, you did makeup for the shoot? I thought it was just the lenses. No, <laughs> no, I uh, I know it's hard to believe because my skin looks so horrible, right? No, it's so it was, subtle, right? Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and that's the stuff that I really enjoy doing. I love doing the character, like the at the at the outside of myself. Characters are fun. Mm, love that. Uh, and Call of Duty was the premise is basically we're in this uh, like similar to an AA type circle. We're in a veterans circle and Brian's character opens up with like this harrowing <laughs> Vietnam story about losing his best friend in his arms and uh, everybody else in there is serious and I'm running the group <clears throat> And Kyle's there because he plays too much Warzone, Call of Duty, the video <laughs> game. And uh, it takes uh, a turn. It takes an ugly it's so turn. Good. It's so good, too, because <laughs> Brian Lally, the guy that plays the main vet in the beginning, he just committed so hard to it. Oh, he's so good. I shut him down a couple times. Oh, it's just so funny. I deserve exactly what I get at the end. Yeah. So. So Brian has a really good understanding of humor. Mm-hmm. You know, because like he has been on It's Always Sunny, or even what do we see him? Thank you for being here. Is that the name of the sketch show? Oh, uh, whatever Tim Robbins, I yeah. wish you were here. Whatever Tim Robinson's show on Netflix yeah. is, Brian was just in, yeah. and you could just tell he gets the humor without playing the humor exactly. Like he yeah. knows, yeah, and it takes discipline to do that. So, it's shout out, Brian. Yeah, which is crazy because he's so not funny in real life, but when it comes to acting, he just knows. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. no. Whoa. I mean, that guy could use a stand up class. You know? <laughs> Dude, he's always just a got couple like, notes. He, couple he's just got like, always got like two jokes you've never heard ready <laughs> to go. Like, yeah. you know? And you know, you're going to get roasted a little bit, and it's hilarious and great. And he's also in Helmet, which is yeah, the next exactly. project. And he's um, funny in that, too. Yeah. I mean, just because he's taking it serious. And, he's a humorous you know, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So we produced Helmet together. You acted in it. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of a step up um, in a lot of ways, like, you know, Bart Rome, shout out Bart Rome. And really? again, Brian, Brian Lally for connecting us on the whole project. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell me a little bit about your experience on that. Uh, Helmet for me was a great experience. Um, it was the first thing I had produced, obviously with you, but in general, um, at that level where it was five day shoot, we were getting, you know, trailers, ordering the crafty. I mean, Mm -hmm. I made like chorizo and eggs and potatoes in the morning for the crew. Like we were waking up at four 30, we were staying on in Acton at Steve's place. Mm-hmm. Good old Steve. Like Steve waking Frumpkin. Up. Mm-hmm. Steve Frumpkin. Um, <laughs> uh, God bless him. Amazing property. And we were up there waking up at 4.30, 5 o'clock on some of those days and just going through it and powering through it and learning God, lessons. Steve, Steve was the man. He was the Ugh. man. <sighs> the man. Just like all, all will- those guys. That's just yeah. fucking awesome. Sorry, like, what were you saying? <laughs> saying like when someone's like you know they'll put they'll put it on their back like they're carrying like no he did like this yeah. man is just first of all a huge man his hands are like yeah. twice mine and they just feel like working hands but he yeah. was moving just the hugest shit like one time I think after the second time we went there was like a new yeah. shed he had built mm. all by mm. himself to help us yeah. move stuff so we could use other parts of the space so. It was an amazing experience, and I learned a lot. I think we learned a lot as friends and professionally together. There's mm-hmm. ups, there's downs. And for my first thing, I mean, we had car chases, <laughs> set Jordan on fire. <laughs> like, I know. But there's like, we did some wild shit on this thing. And I, again, it's another one I'll always be proud of. And the biggest thing for me, and we've talked about this obviously, is we had so many people that came away from that set saying that they appreciated the care we took for them specifically, like Mm. the crew, um, the cast, everybody. I remember everyone being like, this is a different experience. And we have people that, you know, worked on some of the biggest movies in Hollywood, biggest shows on this set with us. Um, and they, we got so many good compliments that we took care of them. They felt seen, they felt heard, uh, they felt appreciated. And we got some really awesome just attitudes mm-hmm. and work out of these people. And, you know, we did it a second time that year for a feature and mm-hmm. same thing. And it, it just felt like the start of something really beautiful. And I was happy to be a part of it and learn. Yeah, and you play Cowboy, which is a pretty interesting character, you know. Yeah. He yeah, I feel like it would be easy to call him a bad guy. Yeah. In this in this fictional version, right? Mm-hmm. Um um because I didn't know the man, but Bart Rome worked with him close. And you might uh, say rough guy or Yeah. He's not gonna give it to you easy. Mm-hmm. kind of guy like you're not gonna mm-hmm. walk up to him and he's going he's not gonna be like hey bud how you doing <laughs> yeah. right off yeah. the bat he's gonna be like yeah. who the fuck are you yeah and how yeah. was that journey to find that for yourself i loved it you know a lot of my acting opportunities are usually like nice guys every day kind of guys mm-hmm. or you know i've been a gay guy a few times too and they were always very fun and up or mm-hmm. you know a little like not a lot of like threatening characters really. And he was mm. threatening. And that was something that I realized. I mean, I wanted to exercise that feeling and kind of live in that. And, you know, it was great. It was great to just be like in boots and have my hat and walk around and <coughs> keep the attitude. And it's also nice too, I think, when you play characters like that to come up with reasons or think of reasons relate to reasons as to why someone would behave that way because i'm a pretty nice mm-hmm. guy i like to think um, i'm a pretty mm-hmm. considerate of people and i'm very empathetic so for me sometimes it can be hard in my real life to be even stern with people or aggressive or be mean so to speak or dickish or whatever your mm-hmm. word of choice is rough um because that's not how i hide myself or express myself so to find the reason why would I do that or how do I view people? What would make me behave this way is a lot of fun. And it was a fun exercise mm. for me and a cool thing to get to 
Express. Hell yeah. Um, and you mentioned Good Bad Things, which is a feature we shot like July, August of last year, I feel. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I think it spanned almost three months, but it was like the last few days of July, all August, and like the first two days of September or something. Yeah. And um, that was incredible in a lot yeah. of ways um, because we got onto it late. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of firsts, like we were a part of the, you know, a, a major crew member being let go early on. And so we brought somebody else in and just being a part of that project and seeing Shane, the director, but also the EP financier just really own his shit in a really honest and gentle way. Hey, hey Lucky. Lucky. Hey, go. Shut. No growling. yeah i love love him so much love you oh get out of here (laughs) love him so much yeah but um you know there was just a lot of there was just a lot of interesting things that happened on the film and it was a lot of fun too and such a chill set <laughs> compared yeah. to like the stocking fields at elevation or for me the wheel or helmet obviously waking up at four every morning yeah uh so what was your experience on that i mean you got promoted through it too initially you were a co-producer but you were just killing it so shane elevated you to producer like pretty quickly yeah yeah that was cool um I love this too. It's like all there's like it's like almost like a therapy session. It's like, how do you feel about that? Like, what was your experience <laughs> with that? Um, it was great. Uh, it was another one where I felt confident stepping into it because of Helmet, and kind of now, okay, I kind of had gotten my feet wet, and you know, there's mm. ups and downs as there always is on any production. So there's learning and all that. So I was ready to jump into another one, and I loved Shane. Loved meeting him. He's a great dude. Um, and Danny Kurtzman, who's the lead mm-hmm. in the movie. It's a great story, great script. And I connected with it on a personal level just because of what it's about, you know, about dating and learning to love yourself and accept yourself and all the beautiful parts and all the maybe not so beautiful parts. Mm. Um, and for me, it, it was actually a really empowering experience to do that one. It was felt nice to step up. We had a really good team. And... I think after it was a good year in general with both of them, because I think anytime you do something like that, you learn empathy for the other side and understanding Mm. for the other side. And I didn't, you know, really have as big of an understanding of producing or, um, you know, even like doing crafty and just like setting up, you know, doing call sheets and just the things that needed to be juggled and kept in mind every time you do one of these things. I didn't have that really. And now I do. So when I communicate with people that are doing that from an actor standpoint or an artist standpoint, a talent, I can completely understand like the stress behind it or know like, okay, maybe something's missing here. I know what to ask if they miss something Mm. if it's something a little more, uh, somebody a little more green or maybe new. Um, And I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful to have that because I think once you have that, then, you know, People dig that. People want to be seen and heard and understood. And so I know it can be stressful. <laughs> mm, yeah. That uh, makes a lot of sense. That was, man. I'm, and I just finished, I'm thinking about the picture lock too. Like even those sessions being a part of it, just, it's always been, these are always educators, these projects. Yeah. And I feel like watching film now, you know, when I watch a movie now, it's it's easier to look at it and go like, oh, I see what they did there. Like, oh, mm-hmm. that, I wonder, you know, what this and this and this, like, how did they accomplish that? Or, you know, we've said to like looking at the credits and seeing how many people did what and going, oh, like I actually know what that position does now. <laughs> like I know what that mm-hmm. person was dealing with or, mm-hmm. oh, here's the different levels of who they needed to hire to just keep this department going for this project and it's mind-boggling like that's the other thing too where it's like it is kind of we talked about you know criticizing or talking shit earlier and it has become harder 
from a standpoint of like just to like you know lack of a better word but just to shit on something to do mm -hmm. that anymore because it's so hard man mm -hmm. like it's so hard to make a movie let alone a good one <laughs> and so mm -hmm. like for me i feel like if you're trying to do it if you're whatever it may be like props to you man like props to you for putting yourself out there and trying but like this shit's tough. I mean, those Marvel movies, like you look at the end credits and I'm like, holy shit. I don't even know where I would begin there, yeah. you know, and somebody's doing all those things and it's yeah. amazing. And they come up with that. <laughs> like, yeah, good job, dude. You guys killed it. Holy shit. <laughs> it is interesting when looking or thinking about art it's like does the context of the artist matter mm. you know because all yeah. like what you just said like when i watch a movie like babylon for example yeah. i'm like wow look how many artists they employed mm. which makes me like it more mm. you know and i don't think a lot of people think about that stuff and that's okay i just wonder about yeah. it they like to think about the negative stuff this actor did whatever so, but what about all the positives too yeah yeah and there's yeah. and you know trying to remember that you know people are on this movie and this project and they give a shit like someone cared like there's at least mm -hmm. there's at least one department or one person mm -hmm. or somebody on there that was like i'm showing up every day and i this matters to me mm -hmm. just more than just the money or whatever the career esteem or whatever like i'm here because i love doing this and i want to make this project as best i can Mm -hmm. And so I try to remember that when I watch things. And of course I have a critical eye still. Like I'm, of course I'm watching performances or things where I'm like, Oh, what would I do different there? Or maybe, you know, mm -hmm. it makes me think about it, but I don't think there's a lot of good that comes out of just tearing something down just for the sake of tearing it down. Yeah. I mean, it like, it's perfectly okay to be like, I don't like it. And that's all I need to say. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. However, if you have a choice between growth and not growth <laughs> neutrality right. maybe mm -hmm. then the growth part would be like what might i do different absolutely and because um, i remember i got humbled years ago i was in acting class at playhouse i was still in the beginning and i would audit mark pellegrino who's an actor and if you know you know he's incredible <laughs> And uh, you know, you know. he was a really great resource at that school because he was literally like in two of the biggest shows at the time in the world, lost and supernatural and just still willing to come back and teach. And um, thank God he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember in the beginning of each class, they'd ask you, remember, they'd be like, what did you see this weekend? Whatever. Anybody go to the theater or watch a movie, whatever. And I was like, yeah, I saw X movie. And I didn't like the end because they did this. And he just looked at me and said, well, what would you have done different? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, then it's probably not the strongest criticism. <laughs> <laughs> just said, uh, like, just like, yeah. well, yeah. 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 He wasn't, uh, it wasn't to like be nice, you know, he was yeah. teaching in a sense and, I'm so glad he did because it really stuck with me. Um, because like imagine giving your like yeah. you give someone your script and they just wrote back, don't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure it's happened. Uh, I'm I sure know it's it just like that's like not someone just writing like helpful. Meh. <laughs> it's not helpful. Me, yeah. And what people don't realize too is when you have to slow down and actually articulate how you feel, you're getting better. Because mm -hmm. now you're getting more sharp or sharper at being more able to just is, I believe how you say it. <laughs> more sharp besties. Yeah. Um and be able to describe <laughs> something more accurate, which is only gonna deepen and enrich in your work and your yeah. life. I feel so like the criticism lazy. is just the first half of the thing. And so a lot mm -hmm. of people just stick to that one half. It's just the criticism is just the first half. The second part is going like, well, what would you do different? Or what would you suggest? Mm -hmm. Or like, how would you do it then? Because if not, then it's like, you know, it just sounds yeah. like an insecure person bitching about stuff or again, yeah. tearing someone down because they want to. Yeah. Which I and... get because I did that. 
I've done it. Yeah, yeah definitely. I everything I have done for sure. <laughs> I have done everything. I have done and everything has done things. me. And we are many things. And the me that no, everything nothing. has done has done every me thing as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, and as with you, with me, as with you, me, as I, I. And see what's that? And what that? Um, all right, so good bad things. We talked yeah. about that. Stoked that'll come out sometime in the next Stoked. year. Stoked. Stoked. <laughs> Stoked. Eh. And you're you're gonna get not your first film festival experience, but your first larger film festival experience yes. from Helmet. July first will be yeah. in Hollywood. Thank God, uh, Egyptian theater. The Dances with Films Festival, which the is a, the, you know, we went to their orientation, and uh, one of the things I remember mm-hmm. was that they said we're still the only festival at the top in the world that doesn't do the Hollywood politic game, mm-hmm. and you know I choose to believe that because they were very adamant about it, and you get that sense like. I was fortunate enough to go to Toronto and uh film festival. And that was not the case, even though I had such a great time, but you could tell it was like, I mean, they literally imagine they built a studio, like a building didn't build it, but Toronto international film festival owns a skyscraper in Toronto. Yeah. So it's a year round business. Super indie. Juggernaut. Super indie. Yeah. 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 It's, it's an so, indie which, skyscraper. Yeah, it's a small. Yeah, it's yeah, only it's thirty like, thirty floors or less yeah. is indie, and yeah. so you know, um, it feels really cool to be a part of it, and I'm excited because we get the filmmaker badges to go shake some hands and butts. I love um, a good but, badge, yeah, <laughs> and I love shaking a good butt. You know, it's just, I know you do. It's just a better way to get to know somebody. <laughs> I said it. Um, yeah, I'm psyched about that. Um, I mean, again, like, what better thing to do than go somewhere and celebrate the art that you made with people you enjoy and get to see it on a big screen in a historic theater. That's where yeah, I th- think the last time I was there was when I saw Hurt Locker, and they did like a Q&A afterwards. Oh, with Jeremy gosh, Renner that's so good. Everybody. So good. Was sweet. But yeah. 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 Looking Tiff was cool. It. Tiff was cool. Um, because, because of like the camaraderie and the fun and, and it'll be a little different cause like a bunch of us went out there. I don't know who will show up from our LA family for this, but, uh, it'll be good to have you there. And so, um, I think we'll wrap it here for now. Cool. And as I do, I just want to say, Oh no, no, no. I want to talk oh. about this for a second. So you've been using Actors Access lately see. to, you know, sort of get back into auditioning more often and basically yeah. practice and then book jobs that are occasionally good that come out of there. Yeah. What has been your experience uh, doing that over the last month or two? Um, it's been honestly a lot different than what I was used to because for, you know, multitude of reasons you know i'm kind of coming back into myself at this area of my life you know i've Mm -hmm. had a few years where if i'm being honest i did do some work and some projects here and there but i really kind of was hiding away for a while and wasn't really pursuing it as much as i could and i'm really starting to get back at that and see that be honest with myself and start working towards that more one of the things that you know, I did at the beginning of this year to kind of do a hard reset and a lot of spiritual, just, just something to kind of kickstart something, just a hard cut was I did a three or four day fast where I did just water. Um, Mm -hmm. and that was pretty intense. I still worked out throughout that and that was pretty cool to go through. And there's a lot of growth in that. And then from that four days, I extended that into a month of doing intermittent fasting. So I only ate from 12 to 12 or noon to 8 PM. And I cut out basically every vice that I had present in my life at the time from coffee Mm -hmm. to I was vaping at the time. Um, So no 
no vices of any kind. And I did that for pretty much a hard 28 days and then ended it with a pretty epic medicine journey. Yeah. And uh, all that to say that one of the things, <laughs> long tangent, and we're getting back. Is, all good. Uh, I just realized I wasn't doing anything actor wise. I wasn't really doing anything to try and stay practiced or, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, align myself with the behavior of what, you know, an actor does, an artist does. It's you seek it out, you try to work, you try to find the things or you create it yourself. And I wasn't doing that. So I said, you know what, 68 bucks a year, like how, like how, <laughs> like, really can't do that. Like, let's jump back on and see mm -hmm. what's up. And it's the most auditioning I've done probably in my entire time out here. Yeah, in you've been auditioning quite a bit. Six months, like I've gotten on average, probably a couple a week, mm -hmm. a couple, you know, at least two to three every week or two. And it's been great to have you there and we get to work on it. And honestly, it's been tough at times to see where some of the rust is or some of the stuff that maybe again, when I was thinking outside in in class that I wasn't getting because, all right, I I'm, wasn't really connected with myself as much as maybe I thought. Um, but it's also been a blast mm. because, you know, we got our little office back there that we do it mm. in. We get to play and talk about it and explore it. And I feel better when I go into situations now as an actor. I feel, you know, even it's like it, everything is kind of lined up to this moment. You know, I talk about it all the time, but I feel very like yeah, my, path, my path was to get me here. And part of it was to go through the dip and the, the not you know, pursuing it and then the insecurities and all that to get to the point where it's like, now I can go, Oh, like, I feel comfortable. I feel like an actor. I feel like I can watch movies and see what I want to do. And I feel like I'm growing. So all in all, it's been a great experience and I would recommend it to anybody. I think just do what, just actually like do it though, you know, like mm -hmm. get on it, submit, get your materials. I know we talked about Devin already, but when you said that about his podcast about that's what you can control is your materials. And my materials were shit and I didn't have them. Like it was a hard pill to swallow, but it's like, you don't have a demo reel. You haven't put one together. You don't have a voiceover reel. You haven't put one together. Your headshots mm. are old as hell. Like dude, like with grace and love for myself, like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what are we doing? And the minute I started doing that, it was like, oh, there you go. Here's more auditions. Mm. And I'm just like, have I gotten a couple of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, like it's, I look at it now as like, this is an opportunity to practice and an opportunity to act. And whenever these other things come up that I'm supposed to get or supposed to come my way, I'll be mm -hmm. that much more prepared and ready. Yeah. Or you can really do, I think. Yeah, and I think there's like an inherent gift in the actor's access um, route that people might not get if they jumped right into the breakdown services pool, which is like where all the major shows and stuff are on. Yeah. And um, which is you're going to get some material on actor's access that is bad, mm -hmm. that it doesn't make sense that it's laughable almost it's so bad or does it make sense so you have to kind of let go of the importance of it yeah and it's well that's actually how you should approach all of it mm -hmm. and it, it's giving you some tactical practical opportunity to actually like because sometimes you and i'll read stuff and we're like chat gpt you know? <laughs> well and, that's just a new phrase yeah. that's in the zeitgeist now yeah. like people are just going to be wondering man yeah, because some of it just doesn't make sense. I and have loved so... you forever time. <laughs> yeah. Now. Okay. Yep. Ooh, all right. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. sounds so, it mm -hmm. just rolled off so. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's been cool to kind of see too. And it's been so, so fun to work on those projects when they do come. And dude, we don't know. Like, you never know. And I think that's the, that's where I'm at in my life right now is, like, you know, I'm doing my best and I'm enjoying the journey and I don't know what's coming next. And that's when it's awesome and it's fun. And I'm just going to keep trying to keep around and do the things I enjoy doing and trusting that it's all going to find me when it's supposed to. And it's been awesome. 
you know but i think everything truly was just a symptom of like i didn't you gotta like actually believe in yourself and think that you're worthy of like earning this stuff and getting this stuff and i don't think i did for a long time Mm. um in a lot of ways with many different parts of my life um and now Mm. things i'm starting to think and feel differently and it's funny because the world responds in kind and Mm -hmm. it's you know it's beautiful to see and you know if i can just real quick because i'm assuming i feel the we're about to go off now um no you can roll along if you need to shit um but you know it's been a beautiful (laughs) journey with you to just go through all of this stuff you know Mm. it feels like we're on our way to something and if anyone hasn't figured this out yet from watching these or meeting this man he's one of the hardest working people i've ever met one of the most respectable people i've ever met um and it's been great to be alongside this ride with you and i can't wait to see where it goes and thank you for always pushing because he does he gonna push you (laughs) he gonna push you and accept nothing less and so sometimes your boy gotta level up a little bit uh thank you my brother yeah yeah Uh, of course i I hear you and i receive that so thank you yeah baby lots of love for you dude i have so much love for you i mean you're you've been there for me through everything Mm -hmm. there isn't one thing you haven't been there for me in so many ways um uh, you're like one of the best people I could ever imagine, let alone know. And uh, beyond that, you're uber talented and all, obviously. But what is the best part of you is not even on the camera. So I love you so much. You deserve the world. Thanks, and man. yeah, and not lucky. He doesn't yeah, deserve no. the world. He deserves a greenie. Yeah, he will get a greenie soon. That's probably why he's like, dude, it's like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, what's going on? <laughs> you guys live together. What, what are we doing? Give me my greenie. <laughs> but uh, I love you, man. I'm going to yeah. s- stop the record, and then we'll chat for just a second so the record can catch up. Yeah. Sound good? Um, Sounds good. Let's, Thanks for let's, having me, bro. All right. But first, improv, impromptu improv. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Sug- su- suggestion is, uh, first word, my a passport, passport, passport. Okay, passport. <clears throat> Hello, sir, at mm-hmm. the the passport office. Yes. Um, this I got the wrong passport in the mail, and it said I had to come in in person. All right, sir. Well, uh, if you got it and you need to come in person, why are you contacting me via Zoom? And Mr. Jenkins, I have to be honest with you. You've done, you've done this before, multiple times. And it's starting to get to the point like, are we, what are we you doing? You got me. You got me, man. You got me, dude. Oh, I don't, this is... This isn't my password, but I made this, man. So I, I just wanted to call to hear your voice again. Let's be honest, Mr. Jenkins. You want to talk about your wife again, don't you? Well, it's just she's so on to me about all the daytime TV watching. And it's not soaps we're talking about because I watch nighttime programming during the day. That's yes. her issue. Yeah, you're one of the few people I know that still uses VHSs to record their shows. They never go out of style, and I love the way they sound. Have you ever heard one rewind? Ooh, daddy. <laughs> okay well this has been great but as i've said before go get a therapist as so many of us do because i'm gonna go see mine after this and tell her all about this exchange 